Let's talk about variable scope or the scope. So Java, like many other languages, has block level scope. Uh, what's a block? Well, a block is nothing more than everything that's between the curly brackets in Java. So here you see this between this curly bracket and this curly bracket, that's a block, and a block can have a bunch of statements in it. Like that. A block can also have other blocks inside it. Like so, I less than 10, I plus plus, and, uh, and here is another block. Like so. So here we have this block, the four block is nested within this block. You see? See how this is inside this one, and this one itself is inside this other one. So when we say that a variable has block level scope, that means that this variable x, for example, can be used anywhere inside this block, the block within which is defined, uh, or the ones inside it, right? So I can put, right, you know, x equals seven in here, and that's fine. So that works out okay. Uh, however, I cannot, if I try to do this, r equals say 99, uh, I cannot do that. I mean, it's gonna tell me, uh, let's see what it says. It says, r cannot be resolved to a variable. So you're like, wait, wait a minute, I already declared it here. Yes, we declared r here, but this r is only declared within this block right here, between here and here. So once the program exits this block, which it does right here, the variable r goes away, it disappears. So we cannot do that. We cannot use that r there. We can declare a new variable r out here in this block, and uh, that'll work. But understand that that is a different variable, right? So if I do that, and I try to print out this r here, uh, the variable well, is telling me that it's already going to tell me that it may not r may not have been initialized. So actually, it hasn't been initialized means it doesn't have a value because uh, I haven't assigned it any value. I only declared it, but I didn't put anything in it. So I can do that. So that's what it means. So this is a common error. People will declare a variable inside a loop and then try to use it outside. Similarly, for the variable i. So this variable i is declared within this for loop, but actually, yeah, even though it kind of looks like it's outside this block, it is actually inside that block. So if I try to say i equals eight, uh, then it's gonna complain again, right? Because i here is outside the block. So once the program exits, gets to this line, exits this block, the variable i goes away. It's garbage collected. So I cannot use it down here. So this is important to keep in mind. Um, another thing to keep in mind is, uh, so while I can use x here, so you see I used x equals seven over there. Uh, I can use it because it's de defined or declared in the outer block. But say I move that down here. Uh, now x is still defined in the outer block, but it's defined after this. So the program starts here, goes to here, does all this, you know, gets to this line. When it gets to this line, x equals 10, x has not been declared, right? X is only declared afterwards. So this is not gonna work, it's gonna give me the same error. X cannot be resolved to a variable uh, because it's down there. So um, be careful with that. Uh, the other thing about for loops is you can also declare uh, multiple variables inside a for loop, uh, like, oops, like so. This is zero. Uh, so I can say i is zero and uh, j is seven. I'll move this back here so that works. And uh, no longer have an, uh, this, of course, doesn't work. 
So I can move the, I can do this. This is only, this is saying that i is zero and j also an integer is seven. So if I want to declare multiple variables within the for loop, I can do that. Similarly, if I want to also, in, or maybe say decrease j, I can do that, right? So I can say at the end, increase i and decrease j. So that's another little thing to keep, to remember. Uh, you'll probably see this, it comes in handy. So that's it.